academy, uh, when you play football or basketball, whatever it is, uh, you go out there and you're able to put everything on the uh, line and to enjoy yourself and and play competitive athletics, amateur athletics, the way they should be played. And I think uh, that's uh, one of the reasons that the academies have been uh, having uh, great success in the last few years. Tomorrow night, Jim Young will talk about what a prospective cadet football player can look forward to at West Point itself. Yesterday in Hano, the Hano Hornets and Geeson Wolverines met to decide the fifth core soccer championship. The two teams had met twice before, with Geeson giving Hano their only two defeats of the year. This time, with the title on the line, the defending champion Hornets gave it all they had, putting the game into double overtime. Airman Tom Borning was on the sidelines for this grueling match. Then, about midway through the first half, Hanau took the lead with a fluke goal that bounced high over the head of Geeson goalie Steve Tanner after the ball had deflected off one of his teammates. The goal seemed to give the Hornets the momentum as they controlled the attack for the rest of the first half, but they failed to build in their lead and led at halftime 1-0. Then, early in the second half, Hanau lost a key player, Jose Tello, to a reoccurring leg injury. His absence would take away the Hornets' consistency and ball control and Geeson immediately took advantage by scoring twice within a span of 60 seconds as Pat Cans of the Wolverines tallied in the 68th and 69th minute. But Geeson's lead was short-lived as Hanau tied it in the 76th minute on a penalty kick. Both teams had opportunities in the late stages of regulation but failed to capitalize, forcing the game to overtime where the intensity level picked up. In the first overtime, Geeson's Maurice Williams and Hanau's John Dealey exchanged goals, forcing the second extra period. Slowly, the Hornets began to take control, and with six minutes left, Hanau's Stanislaw Malcolm dribbled by three defenders for the game winner. Oh yeah, but I was trying to make sure that I placed it in there, because their goalkeeper is a very good goalkeeper. You just can't kick any kind of ball to him. You know, you have uh, they defend their defense. They know exactly. That I've been playing with them three, three consecutive games already, and. Uh, they know if they give me an opening, I'm going to make a goal, so therefore they stay in front of me. So therefore I had to dribble one, two, or three men to get that open shot and put it in there. Hanna will now take two weeks off to recuperate some injured players and to prepare for the USER Championships hosted by 7th Corps. From Hanau, Airman Tom Borning, AFN Sports. In World Cup soccer action yesterday, Canada gained some respect by going head-to-head -head with the European champion French team. The Canadians were playing in their first ever World Cup and held France without a goal for 78 minutes before losing the game 1-0. In yesterday's other game, Brazil shut out Spain 1-0. In action today, Russia will be taking on Hungary. That game will be carried live on German TV ARD at 8 o'clock tonight. Then later on, Morocco will face Poland. That game will be on ARD at 11.45 tonight. Also after the first game, there will be highlights of the Argentina-South Korea game. By the way, ARD is the first program on German TV. And that's sports to the moment. Coming up, Air Force Sergeant Sue Easterwood will have a look at the weather. And in the news, we'll get to find out all about the things available to check out at Outdoor Rec. Tonight on New Hearts. I've missed you. Haven't you missed me? Well, sure, Steph. It's just not the same lip syncing to West Side Story without my Maria. <laughs> New Hearts. Tonight on AFN. Part of the family, there isn't a lot 
Good evening, I'm Staff Sergeant Sue Easterwood. The last couple of May, days in May did end up cooler than normal, but that only evened out the numbers. Specifically, this May was colder and warmer all at the same time, the low being higher than in past years, and the high 63 was lower than the average 67. Came out almost even on the rain with an average of 1.7 inches compared to 1.8. And what's coming up in June, highs in the 70s, lows in the 50s, but more rain, June being one of the wetter months. We're not quite in the 70s today, but we are getting a good start on the rain. And you folks at Sullivan Barracks in Mannheim, at 63 degrees under cloudy skies, will see some of the rain very soon, if not now. Light northwesterly winds, humidity is at 68%, and the pressure 2970 and falling. Dominating today's weather is a near stationary upper air low pressure centered over Central Europe. This is putting all of Germany and the Benelux under a cool, moist northwesterly flow, and it's keeping conditions unsettled and cool. Most of the rain is restricted around the surface front, now in extreme southern Germany, with isolated thunderstorms from Frankfurt through Grafenbeer, and all, although light sprinkles are being reported from England across France as well. A new frontal system will cross the British Isles onto the continent, bringing another organized band of rain showers by tomorrow. But in the meantime, cool, moist air will keep clouds and showers around. And for the specifics of tonight's forecast, we can expect mostly cloudy skies, light rains, and isolated thunderstorms, especially from Hanau through Nuremberg. Light fog will form as lows fall to a cool 42 to 48 degrees. Tomorrow, the Benelux and northern Germany will start out under partly sunny skies with increasing clouds through the afternoon, with the remainder of Germany under mostly cloudy skies with scattered sprinkles and temperatures from 57 to 63 degrees. And that's our weather for this Monday night. Kathy? When you're in the security police business, working on the swing shift doesn't mean your workload gets any lighter. Morning, noon, and night, the job makes its tireless demands, and airmen in the 6913th Electronic Security Squadron are proof that it takes working round the clock to be the best in the Air Force. The security and control of communications of U.S. and Allied forces is the responsibility of the Electronic Security Command. 6913th Electronic Security Squadron Augsburg is the best in the command. Credit goes to our security policemen because they're the ones who set the target of going out and winning this award. They're the ones who put forth the effort to do it. All I had to do is stand back and watch. The airmen in the 6913th are graded on their performance year-round by evaluators. Training is done with security drills giving hands-on experience in material protection. They train for war. They train for against the terrorists. They train against uh, anybody who can be a possible hostile threat to them. everything they do is practiced daily, I mean repeatedly, and not the same exercises. And it's we, every shift, day shifts, swing shifts, and men shifts, all practice daily. These protectors have their sights on becoming best in Air Force. Air Force Sergeant Rich Butcher, AFN Munich. Summertime means vacation time, and if you look around the office, you'll find many of your coworkers have already taken off. And when your leave comes around, one way to get summer sporting equipment is through your local morale support activity outdoor recreation center. And according to Sergeant Charlie Gill, you can't beat the bargains. It's the time of year most of us wait out the winter for, a chance to hit white water or just tour around the country. Military communities have outdoor recreation centers designed to outfit nearly everyone with sporting equipment. Rentals are available for the day or week. A wetsuit will cost you $21 for a week or $10 for the weekend. A cooler is only 6 bucks for the week. If you're interested in something a bit more adventurous, such as a sailboat, you can not only rent from Outdoor Rec, but you can get some on-the-job training as well. Many of the things that we do within the programming section is to help the soldier and their family learn to appreciate the outdoor recreation opportunities in, uh, in Germany and our instructional programs put them in touch with the outdoors and then of course they can come back into our rental facility and rent those and go out on their own. Basically what we want to do is give them the skills to go out and recreate on their own and join in the recreation that Germany has to offer. Well here's a pretty good deal, a bike. Now you can rent it for five bucks a day or twenty dollars a week. Well let's go outside and find something just a little bit bigger. 
If you're one of those types that prefers not to stay in a hotel, then bring your own hotel along. In the peak season, such as now, a camper will cost you 70 bucks a day and $45 a day during the off-season. The Heimer Mobile sleeps at 6, it's fully carpeted, has a shower and microwave oven. And don't forget the stereo. There's a heater for winter and a refrigerator. MSA officials stress that you need to reserve equipment in advance. In Frankfurt, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. On the financial scene today, the dollar continued its upward climb in trading against the West German mark. The dollar gained one setting, sitting on a military exchange rate at 2 mark 31 through tomorrow. One Frankfurt dealer said the U.S. economic fundamentals are supporting the dollar. And while the U.S. numbers don't indicate a boom is beginning, they show that the U.S. economy is in much better shape than people thought a few weeks ago. And finally tonight, what is the automobile of the future going to look like? Perhaps a supersonic silver bullet of the James Bond variety? Or will it be a funny boy, a West German invention that you can plug in at night to recharge batteries that will take you to a top speed of 16 miles an hour? Here's the rest of the story. According to one West German car maker, this could be the forerunner of the automobile of the future, an electric car with a name befitting its size, Sunny Boy. The Sunny Boy may or may not be the smallest car in the world, but the MW Motor Company prides itself on being the smallest automobile factory in West Germany. Each month, a five-man staff turns out 50 gasoline-powered minicars. The electric version due out next spring may not be luxurious, but it is cheap to run, less than a penny a mile. Other electric cars are designed for long distances and high speed. We especially designed our Sunny Boy for short distances and low speed. Therefore, we can use a cheap battery and the battery lives longer. With a fully charged battery, the car has an operating range of 50 miles. Recharging the battery takes 8 to 10 hours, and any electric outlet in the world will do as a service station. According to statistics, two-thirds of all car trips are made with only one person aboard and are shorter than 15 miles. The Sunny Boy is ideal for short hops to the store, which is why the firm's advertising doesn't even refer to it as a car, but rather as a shopping basket on wheels with an umbrella. One thing Sunny Boy drivers need is patience, and so do other drivers who encounter them on the road. The car's 2.5 horsepower motor delivers a top speed of only 16 miles an hour. Its sticker price is actually higher than some conventional subcompacts in Europe, so the Sunny Boy's future may be a long way off. Michael Reedner, European Journal, Weilenbach, West Germany. Can you imagine calling your boss and saying you're going to be late for work because you have to recharge your battery? Well, that's it for tonight. From all of us at AFN, have a nice evening.